Okay, today I'm going to show you a quick little video on how to make an inexpensive earth box type planter that is self watering and self contained and it's really pretty slick. So, okay, for this project we're going to need uh, actually quite a few items, but the main things are the planter. I went to Armstrong Nursery to find my planter. You want one that does not leak out of the bottom. So that one's got a plug in it. Uh, and then you need a different size bottom tray. I'll show you how that all works in a minute. And a couple of drill bits, a box cutter knife, some duct tape, a seedling cup. You're going to have to pick out one that's going to fit the size you need. Some quarter inch drip tubing, a valve for the drip tubing, a sharpie, and a garbage bag, and some fertilizer. And I think that's about it. What I did was to find a size container that's going to work uh, well for a seasonal plant or even a small tree. Uh, and then find a lid. The tricky part is finding a lid or a bottom plate that will slide right, fit right in there in such a way. This one just happens to work perfect. There's some indentations right there and it will sit right in there. It gave me kind of a false bottom which is what I'm looking for. It gives me about four inches. If the trace is to about right here, it gives me three and a half, four inches of space. And in that space is where we're going to have our water reservoir and a half an inch or so of uh, air so that our roots can get air. So the next thing we do is find something that will fit perfect in there. So I found this little seedling cup that happens to be about the right size so what I'll do is drill a hole in here and I'll slip this in the hole and that will go down and sit in the water and act as uh, the wick so I'll put dirt in this and the water will come in and be sucked up through the dirt into the wick system so I just laid this down over in here drew a little circle around it and the idea behind that is uh, I offset the circle because the little plug down there I don't want my cup sitting on that plug it kind of sets it off center so I put my circle in off center and I'll just cut that hole out if you're really fancy you can get a hole cutter and cut this out perfect uh, slightly smaller than the seedling cup, but I'm just using a box cutter cut around just to the inside of that so it'll sit right in there. Okay, so now you can see the, the hole is cut in there slightly smaller than, the, than our seedling cup. You can maybe see down there. The little valve thing that I was trying to avoid is underneath there so we won't be sitting down straight on top of it which is why I offset the circle and our cup our wick cup goes right in there okay next we're gonna drill a few holes in this uh, false bottom I'm using a 3 8 inch wood bit here I just want to perforate this so that some air can get it up into the top for the next step. Now we've got our perforated bottom, we've got our wick in there. Now what I'm going to do is take our wick and drill a bunch of holes in it so that the water can get into into the wick easier. And it's always wet. That way when we fill this up with dirt, the dirt up here will be moist and as it dries out it'll suck moisture from the reservoir up through this wick and the plant will always have exactly the water it needs. Okay, so with the eighth inch drill bit over here, I drilled a bunch of holes in this seedling cup, and that's going to act as our wick. So we'll put that in, in there, or 
about ready to load her up. Next thing we'll do is measure up here on the outside to about about the bottom of the tray here. Just underneath the tray, I'm going to put a hole in so I can run my water line in there. And then right below it, a half an inch or so below it, I'm going to put a drain line. So my seat cup is about three and a half inches high. And inside this thing I have, that's a little vac area in between the planter and the lid where I'm going to run my quarter inch drip tubing. So on the outside, this is where the top of that lid starts. Right about in here is the void area. I can run a tube in here and then I'll drill my drain hole about an inch or so below that so it's, it allows about this much air in between at all times. That'll allow the root system to get some air and still have the wick be able to drop as much moisture as required. And I'll put a couple of drain holes around it so that uh, it can, if something gets clogged in there, uh, some dirt, or also you don't want a vacuum in there so you want it to be able to drain out easily. Quarter inch tubing. for the drain. Okay, so I have my holes in here now. I, I made this tap hole a little bit larger so I can get my tubing in there. I want it to be a good snug fit so I didn't want to use too big of a bit. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Okay, so we just shove our tubing in there. You can see where it comes in. About that much in. So then when this sits in on top of here, I'll fit right in this void here. There you go. Next I'm gonna take my box cutter and cut off so I have a little bit of room. Let's get my adjustment valve on there. So now when we run from our drip system, we can turn this knob to adjust exactly how much we want. We want it to fill up if we're running it for 5 minutes or 10 minutes a day. We want within that time it to, to fill the reservoir and then start coming out of this hole with the overflow. And we don't want it to be shooting out of there, so we'll adjust this down so that we're not wasting any water. And by the end of the time you're running, it's just trickling out of the top. It'll give us the perfect system for using exactly the water we need. Okay, so one last look. We've got our water system coming in with our valve here. Uh, comes inside. We have our false bottom. We have our wick, which is full of holes, so the water can get into there. And now what we're going to do is fill this with dirt, pack it in there tight so it'll, act, it'll suck up the water from the reservoir as it comes in and just keep everything hydrated in here. And we're going to put our dirt mix over the top of this and build it all the way up. Uh, depending on how big our seedling is, we're going to put our seedling in and then fill the rest of it up with dirt. On the outside we've got, like I said, our water coming in and our drain hole coming out and at least a sec one second drain hole coming out so that if one gets clogged, it'll still shoot out the other. Now when we put our dirt in here, which I've mixed uh, potting soil with some compost, that's how I'm going to do it. We want it to be wet. So you can either get it all wet at once or do a little at a time. I'm just going to mix that up so it's uh, nice and wet. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is pack our 
seat cup, our wick. Make sure that's good and packed. And that's going to act as our as our wick for the water to come up into the into the higher areas because that'll always be sitting in water if we set this up right. So whenever the soil starts to dry out up here, it'll start sucking up through this like a sponge and keep everything in the right moisture level. Okay? Okay, I've, I've packed the bottom tray with dirt now, so it should, it's just like any other uh, pot now. I'm going to take this little banana tree I think and plant in here. So next I'll dig this one out, soak the roots a little bit in water, and then transfer it over into here. I'll fill this up as high as I need to so that this will, this plant will sit right at flush with the top. Okay, I've got my root wad all set into the pot now. What I'll do is Fill it up the rest of the way with dirt until it's actually a little mound up towards the center. We want it to be completely full and a little, a little higher than that towards the center so it's kind of ramped up. Next thing I'm going to do is make a little fertilizer trough. So I'm just going to work around about halfway in between. All the way around this. It's not touching the roots, but it's close enough to where as moisture sucks my fertilizer into there, they'll, they'll be fed well. So I just, I'm going to take some Dr. Earth fruit tree fertilizer and pour a, a whole trough full of it. should make it so it just just as the plant is taking the moisture it needs from the soil from down below it should be able to take the nutrition it needs from the fertilizer just like that too. So with that done now what I'll do is take the plastic bag and either cut a hole in it if you can if you can get it all over there or cut a strip in it and make it so it wraps around here tightly. You, you don't want you want this wrapped tightly with plastic so that no moisture can leak out of the top or evaporate through the top. That's the whole idea of keeping the moisture perfect inside is because it draws what it needs from the bottom. It doesn't lose any from the top. It only loses what it uses through evaporation and whatever the plant process is through the leaves. So I'll take a garbage, garbage bag and cut a slit in it about halfway and then just wrap it around here so it completely covers the plant. And then I'll tape it off here. Let it duct tape. And then I'll also duct tape it around the top of the lid and what I hope to do because then once I duct tape it, I'll run my razor knife along the edge to make a nice clean edge around it. So here you see I've ran the duct tape around it a couple of times. And I'm just taking my razor knife and cutting a nice straight edge along to clean it up. Okay, so here's the finished product. Everything's sealed up nicely. We've trimmed the edge. It looks decent. We'll just hook this up to our water and 
and we're done. Okay, uh, we'll move this to outside where I have my little drip system thing hooked up. Been using this for over a year, it works great. Uh, it's a simple knob thing, it's not all the digital stuff. I always have trouble with those, but this one, just turn the dial and it goes once a day for however many minutes you want. So we'll turn it on and I'll show you how this works out. Okay, I haven't decided where I want to put that banana plant yet, so I'm just going to show you what I've previously done with this little tree here, which is a little kumquat, kumquat tree. I've also done a lemon tree we just replanted into a much larger uh, pot. Anyways, this is all set up and hooked into my drip system. Uh, we'll turn turn it on to open it up and you can see I've got drips on both sides on this side it looks like it's a little off level so this one's where the, where the water's flowing out when it fills up so it's filled up the reservoir up, up to this line and now the excess is coming out here so the plant never gets too much water now what I want to do is adjust my knob here so that it just barely trickles out. And then it will be set up perfect so you won't be wasting any water with, uh, with a bunch of it shooting out this end here. It will fill up if I run this for five minutes a day it will fill all my reservoirs up. It will drip out, out of here to show that they're full and I can adjust every day until I get everything working perfectly so it all they all work out at the same level. See this one here it's just barely coming out of there too. Same system. So you can go do whatever you need to do. You can go on vacation and uh, it'll never your plants will never dry up. They'll always have exactly what they need and they grow like weeds. I think I've had this kumquat, this little kumquat tree I've had for five years. It didn't do anything. It was all dead. And I put it into this thing and it started coming back and it's grown probably six inches in the last week. So I think it's really going to show some promise here. Alright, that's about all there is to it. So there you go. That's how you build your own completely self-contained, self-watering planter system for about $25, something like that. Good luck.